overclockers, my name's Bryony and welcome to another episode of News Weekly. Can you guys believe that it's February already? Thankfully, there's plenty to look forward to this month when it comes to both gaming and tech. So let's get into this week's stories about a new crisis game, the Epic Store, more studio acquisitions, and much more. So roll that intro. Kicking off the gaming news chapter this week is a very exciting announcement from Crytek. It's been nine years since the launch of its predecessor, but we now finally have confirmation that Crisis 4 is coming. It's something that fans of the trilogy have been requesting for a very long time, and after the successful launch of the remastered editions, I can't say that I'm surprised that we're getting another instalment. The recently released teaser trailer barely gives anything away. However, in an official blog post from Crytek CEO Avni Yearly, we learn that the game is still in the very early stages of development, and there'll be more details released as work on the game progresses. Therefore, don't go putting on your nano suits just yet. It seems as though this might have been a bit of a premature announcement, as I'm guessing it's still going to be a few more years, or as Crytek called it, a while before we get a glimpse of the gameplay. However, it's great to know that behind the scenes, Crytek now has a dedicated team working hard to bring next-gen technologies and incredible graphics to this popular shooter. If there's anything that we've learned recently, it's not to get too hyped about upcoming games. However, Crytek wants to make sure that it lives up to expectations, and it's encouraging everyone to join their socials, give feedback, and even get involved in this next instalment. Yep, the team is actually hiring right now, and there's openings available for people who will help shape the future of the franchise. With this announcement of Crisis 4, the Can It Run Crisis meme is going to continue with the next generation of PC gamers. And finally, the NVIDIA RTX 3090 Ti announcement makes sense. The next gaming story is from Epic Games, who recently revealed their latest yearly growth report. It seems 2021 was another great year for the generous company, with more users, more revenue, and more total hours played. If you're interested in the numbers, Epic Games revealed that its store now has 194 million users, which is a huge leap over the 160 million last year. The number of hours spent on games played through the Epic Games Store grew to 6.2 billion, which is another great increase from the 5.7 billion hours in 2020. The Epic Store has a long way to go before it catches up to Steam, but there are now over 917 games in the store, which made a healthy $840 million through sales over the last year. However, this amount does pale in comparison to the over $2,100 of free games they gave away to each user over the course of 2021. In total, the Epic Games Store gave away more than 765 million free games last year, which is actually more than it handed out in 2020. And if you're a fan of the regular freebies, you'll be pleased to know Epic confirmed it's going to continue the freebies throughout 2022. This week's free game is actually the adorable platformer Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. It's available until the 10th of February, so make sure to grab it and all the others that are on the way over the course of 2022. Apparently, there'll also be a lot of changes and improvements to the Epic Store itself to help with library management, downloads, and community features. If you want to read more about Epic's plans for the future and the rest of this year, I'll drop a link in the description below so you can check it out. Our next gaming story this week is yet another huge acquisition in the gaming world. They're coming thick and fast in 2022, and now Bungie has been snapped up. Bungie is the former Microsoft development studio responsible for the Halo trilogy of games, and it ended its decade-long deal which brought us Destiny with Activision in 2022. Now the talented studio has been acquired by Sony Interactive. The company announced they bought the developer for an impressive $3.6 billion. 
It does seem like convenient timing to announce such a purchase after Microsoft just announced its intentions to buy Activision Blizzard. However, apparently the bun the the uh, blah, 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 blah. However, apparently the bungee deal has been in the works for around six months. In an interview with news site Game Industry Biz, Sony Interactive CEO Jim Ryan said that Destiny 2 and any future games made by Bungie are still going to be available on other platforms, including consoles. This is definitely good news for the gaming industry and it's great to see PlayStation embracing the entire gaming community beyond its own PlayStation console. Instead, Sony is interested in Bungie's ability to make huge, multi-platform live service online games, which certainly sounds promising when it comes to future large-scale releases. Pete Parsons, CEO and chairman of Bungie said, we remain in charge of our destiny. We will continue to independently publish and creatively develop our games. We will continue to drive one unified Bungie community. Our games are going to continue to be where our community is, wherever they choose to play. With Sony support, the most immediate change you will see is an acceleration in hiring talent across the entire studio to support our ambitious vision. TLDR, Sony is investing heavily in Bungie, but they're not holding the reins and Bungie's future titles are still going to be available on all popular platforms. The gaming industry certainly seems to be condensing recently, with small and large studios being bought up left, right and centre. The next couple of years are definitely going to be interesting and apparently Sony isn't done yet either. As Jim Ryan also said, we should absolutely expect more. We are by no means done. With PlayStation, we have a long way to go. There are many more moves to make. It's a pretty mysterious quote, but I'd say that it hints at more acquisition announcements in the near future. I'll make sure to keep you updated and let me know in the comments below what you think about Sony Interactive buying Bungie. Moving on to the next gaming story this week, it's a bit of a surprise announcement from Blizzard, who have revealed that they're working on a brand new game that's currently titled Unannounced Survival Game. There's not a huge number of details out on the world yet, and the official blog post reads, Blizzard is embarking on our next quest. We are going on a journey to a whole new universe, home to a brand new survival game for PC and console. A place full of heroes we are yet to meet, stories yet to be told, and adventures yet to be lived. A vast realm of possibility waiting to be explored. There's also a couple of bits of artwork to accompany the blog post, and although you can tell they are just sort of an early concept, it does hint at a beautiful forested fantasy world with human characters and some sort of magical portal between different realms. Blizzard's storytelling and character design has always been top notch in my opinion, and combined with the popular survival genre, I'm sure that we're in for something special. Apart from that, Blizzard has been rather quiet about releasing further details, and it's clear to see that this is not a game it's ready to reveal in its entirety for quite a while. Despite Mike Yabara tweeting out that he's already played many, many hours of this project with the team, and there's actually rumours that's been around since 2017. Instead, they are keen on hiring experienced developers to help plan, write and design this next adventure for the company. If you're interested, there are currently game development roles available in art, design and engineering. With Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 already in the works, it's set to be a very busy couple of years for Activision Blizzard. And maybe this unannounced survival game will be the first brand new launch under Microsoft's ownership. I wonder if it will also be an exclusive title. Our final gaming story this week is about Halo, and it's not Halo Infinite this week, but instead the upcoming Halo TV series. There's a product of a partnership between Microsoft, Showtime and Paramount. The first episode isn't actually that far off, and it currently has a scheduled premiere date of March the 24th. 
Now, the most recent news is that we've finally got to see an in-depth Halo series trailer that's over two minutes long and jam-packed full of action and recognisable characters from the franchise. There's Master Chief, Cortana, the Covenant, various weapons including the rage-inducing energy sword, the iconic Warthog and much more. It really gives viewers a taste of what to expect and there's definitely moments of brilliance. In the past, Haley's spin-off content has fallen flat on its face. However, this time I'm sure Paramount Plus are hoping that things will be a lot different. Instead of retelling the original trilogies, they're actually branching out from the already established lore and the series won't actually be a part of the current canon. There's still going to be plenty of the epic 26th century conflict between humanity and the Covenant with all the familiar characters, but now there'll be more personal stories with new characters, adventure, and a reimagined version of the story told in the same universe. I actually took some time to read through the YouTube comments on the trailer, and it's safe to say that the feeling at the moment from fans of the Halo franchise is very mixed. Some people are really looking forward to the big budget series, while others have said that it lacks that halo feeling and atmosphere. It will certainly be interesting to read those day one reviews, which is currently all we can actually do in the UK as there is still no official streaming partner announced for outside the US just yet. We'll drop a link if you want to watch the full trailer below and I'm interested to hear how you feel so make sure to leave us a comment below. Moving on to the hardware chapter of the news, and our only story this week is that Lian Li has re-released the popular Lancol 215 PC case in a beautiful new white edition. This quality case has been designed as the perfect home for high-end hardware. It has a great airflow from the two included 200mm fans on the front panel. It's a rare sight to see such large fans on a recently released case, but with the ARGB lighting, I think that it looks fantastic. The sleek all-white exterior showcases your components through the large tempered glass panel and the space for full-size GPUs, EATX motherboards and up to 280mm radiators. Completing the look is a large PSU shroud that hides any of those messy cables and the well-placed grommets make cable management a breeze. If you love the look of this case, you can currently pre-order it at Overclockers UK for only $84.95 and I'll drop a link in the description below. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Overclockers News Weekly. Remember to leave me a comment below, let me know your opinion on this week's news stories. Give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, press the bell icon and I'll see you again next Friday.